sometimes, many times, that's a lot more Spartan lifestyle than we thought we were going to end up with. But you know what? If God didn't give it to us, we don't need it. He gives us everything that we need to get through our days. Everything. And we look at the word reward again, we think of reward as something that can be earned. And we talk about God's favor and eternal life. But we all know that that can't be earned. There's not a thing in the world that we can do to get God's favor. God gives us favor by grace alone. By His grace alone. That's how we get it. And we get that through our inheritance and in the family of God, through our baptism, and through the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And that's the good news as we go forward, that we're always going to have that with us. Always going to have that with us. Now, as present-day disciples, when we go out there in the world, we might not get a warm welcome either. And in fact, many of us have probably had situations where we've gone out to proclaim the gospel. And maybe we got rejected. And we got turned down and stopped that. But, and this is where Jesus always turned things upside down on us again. Even though we are called to go out and be welcomed by other people in the name of Jesus, we are also called to welcome everyone in the name of Jesus. That's something the Holy Spirit does especially well. We are a very welcoming community. We are a very loving community of faith. But you know what? As good as that is, it's not enough. It's not enough because we are called to be a missionary church. We are called to go out and claim the gospel outside of these walls. We can't just walk with those who come into our doors, newcomers. We have to go out and walk with everybody. Everybody into the life of Christ. That's our calling. That's what he's calling the disciples to do. Go out, preach the word, show my works. And we're called to do the exact same thing. Now, for those of you who participated in the Lent program this, this uh, last Lent, you know we've talked a lot about changes that are affecting the church these days. And we had our awakening program with Diana Butler Bass. And we talked about how people just don't come to church. And how if we in the church are going to survive, We've got to make some changes. And we do. We have some hard questions that we have to face. And we have to face them bravely. We have to answer them honestly. If we expect this church, any church, to be a vital component in the social, spiritual, and cultural landscape that is our country. And I've got a couple of those questions for you. Just to think about it. Um, there's a Reverend Elizabeth Johnson who's doing a lot of work in this area as well. And these are some questions that she posed. And I thought they really uh, kind of hit home. What would happen if we stopped expecting people to just come through our doors to church every Sunday? Through their own initiative. And instead, we took more seriously our calling to go out to them. How would that change how we look at church? What would happen if we truly believe that we bear the presence of Christ in everyone that we encounter? In every home, every workplace, every neighborhood. That we are Christ representative. What would happen if we saw every conversation as an opportunity to speak words of grace. Every interaction is an opportunity to embody Christ's love for thy neighbor. We do that in these walls. How successful are we outside of these walls? We can't just welcome people to the brick and mortar church. We have to go out and welcome everybody into the church of Christ. And we can do that. We can do that. It's our call. We've got to remember that we are a missionary church. God sends us out because we are hope. We are mercy. We are justice.
take that action believing that it's for God. Because in the end, everything that we do is for God. And if we fail to act for God, we're really being selfish. I used to quote a couple of weeks ago in the Holy Spirit Weekly. All that's required for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. And you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the theologian and preacher, he echoed those same words when he said, To not see is to see. To not speak is to speak. To not act is to act. And we can do that. We can turn a blind eye to all the injustices that we see in the world. We can lower our voice and not speak for all those that don't have a voice in this world. We can refuse to act for all those that don't have an advocate in this world. But if we do that, then we're really acting against God and being selfish. So I ask you to leave her today. Think about this. What can I do today that's unselfish for someone? What can I do for someone that has no reward to give me back? That has nothing they can give back to me just to help that person? Whatever action you take, whether anybody else knows it or anybody else sees it, God will. And that's what's important. We have a lot of love here in this place. And I believe that Holy Spirit welcome can be taken outside of these walls. It can. We can be the beacons of light that show people the way for all who seek Him. We can do it. We can do it. We have to do it. That's what we're called to. You know, in uh, the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us, I am the light. For all the world to see. And he is. He's that ever present light. Shining ever so brightly all the time. To bring people into him. And we have to be that light in this world. We have to let that light of Christ into us. And we have to magnify it and reflect it back. We have to let that love light shine through us. And emanate that out in the world. To show people the way. To Christ. You know, there's an old tradition for travelers that you put a candle in the window, and the light in the window, to let people know that someone's home and that they're welcome. Well, that light of Christ burns deeply in the window of our soul. That's the welcome sign. And right next to that window, there has to be a huge door open wide. Open wide for everybody that wants to come through and find the life of God. There's a new song out. Uh, let me find it here. Sorry. By a gentleman named Jason Gray called Every Act of Love. Let me do something like that, right? And then he says, God put a million, million doors in the world for his love to walk through. One of those doors is you. God put a million, million doors on the face of this earth for his love to walk through. One of those doors is you. And I believe that's our calling. Our calling is to be that door through which other people 